So we're at the place where our component is pulling the initial information from the to-do store. And then we're also listening to that to-do store. We're going to update whenever it changes. So the next piece to put into play for Flux is let's add a dispatcher now and let's register our store to that dispatcher. So any actions that come through the pipeline, our store will get notified to all of them and get a chance to respond. So that's actually very, very simple to do. We just want to use Flux as dispatcher. So npm install s flux. There you go. That's going. And then let's go ahead and create a dispatcher file. We're going to call this dispatcher.js. Dispatcher.js. And all we do is import flux as dispatcher. And then we're just going to export defaults, new dispatcher. That's it. So we've created a Flux Dispatcher, and that's what you get when you import Dispatcher.js. So now our to-do store can actually register itself as a listener to the dispatcher. And that's just as simple. So we're just going to go import Dispatcher. From Dispatcher. And then all we do down here is we do Dispatcher Register. There's really only two dispatcher methods that you use. You use register to register a new listener, which in this case is our to-do store. And then you're actually going to do dispatcher.dispatch, which is what all our actions will use to dispatch actions. So in this case, we're doing a register. Um, then we need a method here that's going to handle all of our actions. If you remember, again, every action that's hap that happens across the app is all going to get handled by every listener. Uh, so we want something here that's going to handle actions. So on my to-do store, I'm just going to create a handle actions method. And there will be the and we'll method, and we'll just call it there. Um, to-do store received an action. And then we'll spit out what the action is. Okay. And then so we're just going to register to-do store handle actions. And we're going to bind it to to-do store. So that way the value of this inside of here is to-do store. Because we'll want to do stuff like this dot create to-do. You know, if it's a create to-do action, we'll want to be able to call our own internal methods. So there we go. We've registered to-do store, bound it to the right place, and that's it. We're good to move on. So let's go ahead and now expose dispatcher globally so we can play around with it. Reload my app here. Oh, I didn't run npm run dev. Get that started up again. Okay, we're going. And now let's dispatch something. Let's go dispatcher, dispatch. Um, type some events. There you go. To do store received an action of some event type. Some event two. There we go. So whatever event I dispatch, it's automatically going to be handled by this handle actions method. So now we just need to only respond to the ones that we care about. If it's not something that to-do store cares about, we just do nothing. So the easiest way to do this is use an uncommon thing, which is a switch statement. So we're going to use a switch, and we're going to switch based off of action.type. If it's a type we care about, we do something. If not, we just move on. So in this case, we're going to go case. If type is create to do, then we're going to do something inside of this block, which this is this create to do. And we'll say that text again is all that we need to pass. So we'll say that action.text will be what we pass through. So there we go. That should work on a create to do event. So let's go ahead and fire a create to do event. Type is. And it's a standard to always use all uppercase because these are basically constants. Um, and then text is going to be new to do. There we go. New to do appeared up there in our app. Let's go new to do two. New to do two appeared up there in our app. Excellent. Uh, so now our dispatcher is in place. The only thing we have to do is start giving it actions and our flux circle is complete. So let's go ahead and add actions in the next video.